One, I need to close the gate. Confirm position. Can you hear me? Are you out? Marine One. Imagine a time long ago when the oceans were filled with huge predators, ruling the underwater world like kings. These giants of the ancient seas may sound like creatures from a storybook, but they were real animals that lived millions of years ago. Around 66 million years ago, at the end of the Cretaceous period, there were actual sea monsters. While dinosaurs were busy roaming the land, the oceans were home to creatures called mosasaurs, which were massive marine reptiles. Mosasaurs were not dinosaurs, but they were huge lizards that lived in the water, growing as long as 12 meters, about 40 feet. They were related to modern-day iguanas and monitor lizards, although they were much, much bigger. These marine reptiles weren't just a few oddities. They were everywhere, and they came in all shapes and sizes. Take the plesiosaurs, for example. There were big ones with long necks that we often see in pictures, and there were smaller ones with shorter necks. During the later part of the Mesozoic era, these shorter-necked ones became top predators alongside the mighty mosasaurs in the rough, wild waves of the ocean. Let us discuss them one by one. Thalassotitan of Mesozoic era. Thalassotitan, a mighty marine reptile of the Cretaceous period, was a formidable predator of the ancient seas. Its name, which means sea giant, aptly reflects its massive size and impressive presence in the oceanic ecosystem. As a member of the ichthyosaur group, Thalassotitan possessed a streamlined body, reminiscent of modern-day dolphins, designed for swift movement through the water. However, what truly set Thalassotitan apart were its dangerous features and unique adaptations for hunting. It's huge. Unveiling a Jurassic sea monster. This is the two-meter-long skull of a pliosaur, one of the most fearsome predators the planet has ever seen. So it's got big teeth, excellent for stabbing and killing its prey. It doesn't chew its food, it just breaks into bits and digests. Throws it back yeah, to get in there. And the... digest the bone and everything. One of the most striking features of Thalassotitan was its formidable jaws, armed with rows of sharp, needle-like teeth. These teeth were perfect for seizing and tearing into prey, allowing Thalassotitan to feast on fish and squid with ease. Its powerful bite, combined with its streamlined body and powerful flippers, made it a highly efficient predator in the ancient seas. Thalassotitan atrox, the newly discovered species of mosasaur, emerges as a formidable apex predator of the ancient seas during the late Cretaceous period. Resembling a modern-day Komodo dragon with flippers instead of legs and a shark-like tail fin, Thalassotitan was a sight to behold. Its evolution marked a significant shift in marine ecosystems as it took on the role of a top predator, dominating the waters once ruled by creatures like plesiosaurs and ichthyosaurs. As mosasaurs diversified and grew larger over the last 25 million years of the Cretaceous, Thalassotitan emerged as a specialized predator capable of preying on all other marine reptiles. Some mosasaurs evolved to feed on small prey like fish and squid, while others crushed ammonites and clams. However, Thalassotitan took its place as the ultimate predator, consuming whatever crossed its path in the ancient seas. The remains of Thalassotitan were unearthed in Morocco, just outside Casablanca, where the Atlantic Ocean had flooded northern Africa during the late Cretaceous period. Nutrient-rich waters upwelling from the depths fueled blooms of plankton, creating a thriving ecosystem where small fish flourished, eventually becoming food for larger predators like mosasaurs and plesiosaurs. However, Thalassotitan stood at the top of the food chain, preying on these marine reptiles with ease. Measuring nearly 30 feet, 9 meters long, with an enormous skull reaching 1.4 meters, 5 feet in length, Thalassotitan was comparable in size to a killer whale. Unlike most mosasaurs, which had long jaws and slender teeth for catching fish, Thalassotitan boasted a short, wide muzzle and massive, conical teeth reminiscent of an orca. These adaptations allowed it to seize and rip apart large prey, solidifying its position as an apex predator in the ancient seas. Thalassotitan occupied a similar ecological niche to modern-day killer whales and great white sharks, reigning supreme as the ruler of the late Cretaceous oceans. 
Its discovery sheds light on the complex dynamics of ancient marine ecosystems and underscores the importance of apex predators in maintaining ecological balance in the world's oceans. The Lhasa Titan's teeth exhibit significant wear and damage, suggesting a lifestyle quite different from that of a typical fish eater. Instead of the expected tooth wear caused by consuming fish, the Lhasa Titan's teeth show signs of chipping, breaking, and grinding, indicating a diet that involved attacking and tearing apart other marine reptiles. Some teeth are so extensively damaged that they have been worn down almost to the root. Remarkably, evidence of Thalassa Titan's predatory behavior extends beyond its own dental wear. Fossils discovered in the same geological layers show signs of acid damage, indicating they were subjected to digestive processes. Among these fossils are remnants of large predatory fish, a sea turtle, a half-meter-long plesiosaur head, and the jaws and skulls of at least three different mosasaur species. These prey items would have been consumed by Thalassa Titan, their bones later regurgitated after digestion. Dr. Nick Longrich, senior lecturer at the Milner Center for Evolution at the University of Bath and lead author of the study published in Cretaceous Research, acknowledges that this evidence is circumstantial. However, it provides compelling support for the hypothesis that Thalassa Titan was a predator capable of preying on a variety of marine creatures, shaping the dynamics of ancient marine ecosystems. The new Mosasaur lived in the final million years of the Age of Dinosaurs, a contemporary of animals like T. rex and Triceratops. Along with recent discoveries of Mosasaurs from Morocco, it suggests that Mosasaurs weren't in decline before the asteroid impact that drove the Cretaceous mass extinction. Instead, they flourished. The Triassic period, after the massive extinction event known as the Permian extinction, which wiped out many species, there were lots of different habitats available in the oceans. This allowed reptiles to become the dominant creatures instead of arthropods, amphibians, or ancient types of fish. One of the first groups we'll talk about is the Placodonts, which appeared in the Middle Triassic period. These were big, slow creatures that kind of looked like turtles. They had special teeth for crushing shellfish, and one famous member of this group was Placodus, which lived like a walrus or manatee, using its teeth to crack open shells as it sifted through the sand in coastal areas. Placodonts were a varied group, and some, like Henidus, were starting to look more like turtles, even though they weren't related. In the deeper waters, there were nothosaurs, which were similar to plesiosaurs, they had long necks and tails, and some even had flippers. Their sharp teeth made them great fish hunters, and Nothosaurus in particular was quite famous and lived in many places from Europe to Asia. They probably spent some time on land, but mainly hunted in the sea, kind of like seals or sea lions today. As the Triassic period went on, some reptiles started to look more like plesiosaurs, like Pistosaurus, with their long necks and four flippers. Then there were thalatosaurs, which were odd-looking reptiles with paddle-like limbs and long snouts. Most of them were fish hunters, but some, like Zinposaurus, were a bit different. They had a long snout for digging up fish and shellfish from the seafloor. Other strange reptiles of the Triassic included Tanistrophius, known for its long neck, and Dinocephalosaurus, which had a long neck too, but used it in a unique way to catch fish. Then there's Atopodentatus, which has a weird-looking mouth that was first thought to be like a zipper, but now seems more like a duck's bill. They probably used this mouth to sweep through the sand to catch shellfish. This is just a glimpse into the weird and wonderful world of Triassic marine reptiles. There are so many more fascinating creatures to discover from this time period, making it the perfect place to start our journey through prehistoric oceans. This had a peculiar shovel-shaped snout lined with numerous small peg-like teeth. This unusual adaptation suggests that Atopodentatus may have been a specialized filter feeder, using its unique snout to sift through sediment on the ocean floor in search of small invertebrates or algae. Its discovery challenges previous notions of marine reptile feeding strategies and adds a fascinating new dimension to our understanding of Triassic ocean ecosystems. Ichthyosaurs By the end of the Triassic period, a bunch of ichthyosaurs had made themselves at home in oceans worldwide. Some of these ichthyosaurs were not only spectacular, but also among the most amazing creatures ever known. When people think about the Triassic, 
they often think about ichthyosaurs, especially creatures like Shastasaurus and Shonosaurus. These two were the biggest animals ever known, reaching lengths of 21 meters. Shastasaurus was nearly as long as a blue whale, the largest animal ever. With features like a mix of a shark, whale, and crocodile, these massive marine lizards were incredibly powerful and likely didn't have much to fear in the ancient seas where they lived. They mostly ate fish and squid, and seeing a group of these giants swimming together would have been a breathtaking sight. But there were other kinds of ichthyosaurs in the Triassic seas too. Some looked more like fish, such as Mixosaurus, while others had a more reptilian appearance, like Thalatoarchon and Bassanosaurus. Some scientists think that Cardiocorax, an early member of the group, might have been a kind of transition between land and sea life, not quite like the other ichthyosaurs. Throughout the Mesozoic era, ichthyosaurs were very successful marine reptiles. The Jurassic period, especially the coastlines of the United Kingdom, is famous for being a hotspot for finding ichthyosaur fossils. Mary Anning, a famous fossil collector and paleontologist from the early 1800s, found many well-preserved specimens during her time. Jurassic ichthyosaurs were mostly shaped like fish, unlike the earlier, more reptile-like ones from the Triassic. Ichthyosaurus, which gave the group its name, is one of the well-known genera found in southern England. Other iconic genera include Temnodontosaurus and Ophthalmosaurus. These creatures looked like fish, but lived like dolphins, although they weren't related to either. With their big eyes and strong bodies, they were perfectly built for hunting fish and squid in the open ocean. But as the Jurassic went on, the Ichthyosaur group started to decline. By the time the Cretaceous period rolled around, only one genus, known as Ophthalmosaurus, was found in places like Australia, North America, and the UK. It's called a wastebasket taxon because it's based on very few and uncertain remains. Even though ichthyosaurs disappeared, the oceans during the Cretaceous period were still full of amazing marine reptiles. Thanks for exploring the wonders of the seas with us. If you enjoyed this journey, remember to like and subscribe for more captivating content. And we will see you next time in the Underwater Scaries.